let's just say for the sake of argument that Brock is looks really good in the three month checkup and he's able to come back. Let's just say for the sake of argument, week one training camp. Okay, week whatever training camp. If Brock gets in there and doesn't play the way that he played last year, All bad. what kind of a leash is he going to have? Because again, the whole thing that we have heard about the 49ers from everybody is win now, small window, don't have time for, for somebody to develop. And it's funny because like, are we forgetting that Brock Purdy was a rookie last year? Like he's going to develop and have growing pains too. So if Brock struggles, does Kyle have a short leash with him too? I mean, yeah, we, we see Kyle Shanahan's pattern. Like we talk about him in terms of like dating. He's like the kind of guy, as soon as he makes it official with a girl or a quarterback, <laughs> he's looking for a reason to break up with her. Like first time they have a fight, first time, you know, he sees her without makeup. First time a date doesn't go well, it's over. And I feel like th this is, he's setting him up. Come back too soon, no off season, doesn't play right away. Spent the whole off season talking up Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold's been there working all off season. I mean, Kyle's itching to go to Sam Darnold. Itching. You can hear it in his voice yeah. because he really, I mean, I think he thinks he can do with Sam Darnold what Harbaugh did with Alex Smith. And maybe Harbaugh could turn uh, Sam Darnold into Alex Smith. I don't know that Kyle Shanahan can do that because what Harbaugh did for Alex Smith was pump up his confidence. When has Kyle ever done that for a quarterback? So I'd love to see him pull that off. But I think that's what he's. I think he really wants to do that. So if if Brock is not what he used to be, I think he'll have. They're not committed. They like Sam. Go to Sam or Trey. Whatever. Who cares? From Kyle's can perspective. Can I just say like, what did Jim Harbaugh really do for Alex Smith? Nothing. Alex Smith never he, made a Pro Bowl. Under Jim all he Harbaugh. said was Jim Har All he basically did was uh, Alex Smith was a laughing stock. Everyone wanted him out of town, and Harbaugh said, "I'm Jim Harbaugh, and I think Alex Smith is good." That went a long way in 2011. People were like, "Really? Is he trolling? Can he be serious?" And he kept saying it. I'm Jim Harbaugh, and I think he's really good. And I mean, it it turned his career around. He he actually became a winning game manager. Uh, he threw like 17 touchdowns a year with Jim Harbaugh. That's like yeah. one a game. He was yeah. much better in Kansas Kansas City. Uh, yeah. Andy Reid in Kansas City actually got more yeah. out of Alex Smith. It's Jim true. Harbaugh really didn't. So, but he was a turnover machine before Harbaugh got like he was Sam Darnold. He was losing games, getting benched for guys like Troy Smith and David Carr. Like, <laughs> yeah. like it was bad. It was bad. Like he people thought like there was a really dis there was when I was in college there was a discussion who's better Alex Smith or Sean Hill. It's like God Alex, how the mighty have fallen. I kind of feel like Sean Hill and Brock Purdy are the same guy. Is that terrible? Uh, same number. J same number, same arm. Yeah. JJ yeah. Zero, zero watching on Twitch. It's not going to happen. But what is stats going to do if Darnold wins the Super Bowl this year? You're right, JJ. It's not going to happen. So we don't even need to discuss it. It's not going to happen. I can see him going to the NFC Championship game and losing, though. I can see that. Just like every other quarterback the Niners have had. He's, he's hideously bad. Darnold. Yeah. He's... I'm I'm stunned All, that he's even on the roster. The Niners have to convince him. Kyle has to convince him, like, dude, stop doing too much. You commit, like, two turnovers a game. If you commit turnovers, you're going to get benched. All you got to do is check the ball down to Christian McCaffrey. If it's not there, stop trying to be a playmaker. You're not a playmaker. You're a game manager. Can you do that? That's what he has to do. I don't know. Can he buy in? If he doesn't buy in, he's out of the league. So we'll see. Street Jews Film says, geez, guys, you guys are stressful. But the Niners are stressful. We're just trying yeah, to make sense I mean, of this. I'm not that stressed. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to figure out if taking them at their word what they're going to do in certain situations. That's all I'm trying to do here, really. I mean, you have a team that calls itself a contender, if not the best team in the league, and they won't tell you who their quarterback is. It's I mean, it's worth talking about. Well, but Vegas has them with the best odds in the NFC. So Vegas doesn't care who the quarterback is. It's not just Kyle. And it's crazy. Like in 2023, when it's a quarterback driven league, you got this one team that has no quarterback, but everyone's like, oh, yeah, they can win their way. You sure? Are you sure? <laughs> what do you mean by win? Right? Yeah. Win right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. There's a difference between sure. winning titles and winning a lot of games. And Don't you get the not... feeling that the Niners would rather be th them than the Rams? It's like the Niners are take pride in being like the best built team that hasn't won a Super Bowl. Like, I'll take a team that's won a Super Bowl over what they've accomplished. I think that the Niners were more afraid to fail than the Rams. I think the Rams said, we're trying this thing, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but we're going to take a big swing. The Niners 
they want to hit a home run, but they don't want to totally take that big a swing because they might miss. And if they yeah. if they try to hit a home run, they might still end up with a double, which they're cool with, but they can't tolerate swinging and missing. No, can't. Absolutely not. <laughs> I like that metaphor. I don't know why. Like, it, only one team wins the Super Bowl. If you go to the NFC Championship game, yeah, that's nice, but you still didn't win the Super Bowl. So to me, you should be doing things geared towards winning the title, even if it costs you some playoff appearances down the line. They're not willing to do that. That's that's the crux of the issue right there. I think they feel what the Ram, the Rams had to sacrifice a couple years of being in the mix to get that Super Bowl, and the Niners never want to sacrifice being in the mix or Jed. So there's no um, push urgency to do the all-in move because you that could come at the expense of a year or two. They're not going to do that. Not going to do it. Well, and I when I say the all in move, like I'm talking about all in in terms of mortgaging out your what you future have a quarterback. Like, oh yeah, clearly yeah. they made an all in move to get Christian McCaffrey. That's an all in move when you trade yeah. two, three, four, and a fifth round next year to get a running back, the most injured position in the NFL. That's an all in move. But when you haven't yeah. gone all in at the quarterback spot to find out what you have, that's what I'm talking about because. Like everyone has said, they're not willing to potentially lose games. It's also not guaranteed that they would lose games while Trey Lance played, by the way. But they're not even, they don't even want to potentially risk that to find out. And that's the frustrating thing. Which is so crazy because go back and look at the scouting report on Trey Lance coming out. Project needs time, needs time on task. And the Niners, like, they, it's like they told him, like, oh, everyone's wrong about Trey Lance. You know, he, he played under they center in college. Mm -hmm. he, they play, he played under center in college. He did really well in this cognitive test. He's going to be ready right away. <laughs> and they're like, you know what? Everyone was right about Trey Lance. Damn. Damn. That's it's the like, real wow. winner of this offseason is that S2 cognitive test. Because that thing gets Absolutely. brought up more. Like, oh, my God. Uh, yep. Let's see. Who is this? Waldemar? says Brock, Sam, or Trey, the issue will be offensive line protection. Purdy has the body type of Breeze. They need to move the pocket and keep him safe. There are some questions on that offensive line, Grant. I know PFF hated the play of Aaron Banks and Spencer Burford last year, gave him incredibly low grades. I Particularly okay. Burford. Particularly Burford. Yeah, Burford's grade was like 39 or some. It was low. Um, to my eye, granted, it's definitely untrained. I didn't think their offensive line was that bad. I thought it was good enough. And they, uh, in terms of run blocking, that towards the end of the year, they were mowing people over. I thought it was okay. I mean, Trent Williams is great. Uh, Aaron Banks is solid. Jake Brendel's solid. Um, mm -hmm. Burford, that right side just isn't good enough. And I, don't, I feel like it's, it's it, it, we always talk about McGlinchey, but frankly, he's been better than the right guard every single year. Like oh, yeah. the right guard is never really that good. And like Burford wasn't even a full time player. Like he would play most of the game, but they would bring mm -hmm. in Brunskill. Um, and you know, the, when Johnson got hurt at the end, like that was just Burford getting beat by Linval Joseph or who who was it? That I mean, yeah. he just got beat. Uh, so I'm a little concerned about the right side still. Uh, now you got it's going to be Burford and Feliciano and McKivitz and Zakel. Like, uh, 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 hopefully, two guys step up. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well. So we saw Aaron Banks essentially kind of redshirt for a year and sure. ended up being a solid player. Maybe they think that Zakel can do the same kind of thing. And maybe Possibly. he can. I don't know. He's a good athlete. I, I, frankly, I, I'd like, I'm a little more intrigued with him than McKivitz. I, I don't really see, there's not much upside with McKivitz. I yeah. think Zakel, he could be a good run blocker. He's fast. He's big. I don't know how good he's going to be in pass protection, but I mean, that's the story of every Niners right tackle ever. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> given what happened with Aaron Banks, do you think the Niners have earned the benefit of the doubt when it comes sure, to Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and not just Banks, but Brendel. Last year, we were like, what is the plan at center? And they're like, hey, we like Brendel. We like Brendel. And he ended up being solid. Like, he's a Pro Bowl alternate. Played all 17 games. Like, these aren't, like, impact players, but you can't be, I mean, gave him a five-year extension. He earned it. So uh, it, it's possible that Burford really is ahead of schedule. Like Banks couldn't even play as a rookie. Burford did. So maybe he makes, maybe he's way better as a second year player. I just don't believe in McKivis. I've seen McKivis play. He's a fifth round pick. He's not a great athlete. I think it's on Zakel or someone they draft to, to take that spot. If McKivitz is your swing tackle, I feel much better Fine. about him. Then you're all right. He could but play left you, tackle too. Right. He's a good if swing tackle. Starter, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Pete 98, 146. I'm starting to think they'll sacrifice Trey Lance to pick up right tackle help. 
again, I don't know how much value Trey Lance has to pick up like a, a big time right tackle. You're going to trade a potentially great quarterback that you haven't developed for a right tackle. Mm, no, thanks. Yeah. Remember, the I'll Cleveland pass. Browns drafted Joe Thomas and he played over 10,000 straight snaps at a Hall of Fame level and it didn't matter at all. At oh. all. No I mean, impact. No impact. They went 0 and 16. He never touched the ball in his life. Right. So I don't know that you necessarily want to make that trade.